What's up everybody? So this is Trevor Salzman and we are going to show you how to hit a chip shot, pitch shot off of a super tight lie. So I know a lot of people, they struggle with blading a lot of these shots. They try and pick them. And so a lot of times contact becomes really, really poor based on how we're trying to hit the shot, what type of part of the golf club we're using and how we're going to hit kind of that nippy spinner off of a lie like this. So for me personally, this is one of my favorite shots. The tighter the lie is, the more I like it. Uh, but there are some keys that we have to go through in order to hit the shot right here. So the number one thing, if I show you this from down the line, the number one area that I would say that players struggle with when they're trying to hit this shot off of a tight lie is what they do is they let the handle get too low. So A, they grip the golf club too long so the first thing I would say is we need to make the golf club significantly shorter because that is going to be changing the vertical swing plane, which is going to allow us to use the proper part of the golf club to interact with the turf so that we can get the contact that we need. So when I see a player who sets up down here to hit the shot, a lot of times when they do this, this is going to bring in unnecessary turf interaction behind the ball. And we can't have that off of a super tight lie Otherwise, this club is going to hit the ground. It's going to bounce into the golf ball. So we've got to use a proper setup in order to slide the golf club underneath the golf ball, create that crisp contact, get a little bit of spin on it so that we have some more predictability of it. So the first thing that I want you to do is I'm going to have you grip way up on the golf club like this. So almost to where your grip meets the shaft. And what that's going to do is that is going to get your swing plane quite a bit higher. So you can see this would be sitting closer to 90 degrees versus it being down here closer to 45 degrees. And what that does to the turf interaction right here is this is going to make more of the toe side of the club sit into the ground right here. Whenever we get the heels, whenever the heel is sitting into the ground, if we hit the heel first, the toe is gonna to overtake it and that's where we get that bounce into the golf ball where we can skull it, we can chunk it, whatever it might be. So what we're trying to do with this specific shot is we want to feel more turf interaction simply from this part of the golf club right in here. I never want to feel any of the heel side of the golf club interacting with the turf on this specific shot. So all of our interaction is going to be toe side. So once we get into setup, this is going to be more of how the golf club right here is going to look. Then from a stance perspective, if anything, I would want to see your stance minutely more closed versus open. And the reason being, and I know this goes against with a lot of other, with a lot of other instruction that says for short game shots, we need to open our stance. But the reason I do that is the more I close my stance, this puts pressure into my lead side, which is going to allow me to contact the golf ball first. The more I open up, this shifts my pelvis backwards to where now if I'm here, I'm trying to throw the club at the golf ball and hoping that I time the right amount of release to just barely slide that golf club underneath there. So when I get in here, again, I'm going to be gripping down on the golf club I'm going to close my stance out a little bit from here. Now from a face on perspective, once this is minutely closed out, I'm going to lean a lot more pressure into my lead side. So this left leg is going to feel extremely, extremely solid. So you can see when I'm making practice swings here, my left leg is staying very rooted to the ground. And that's how I can get the golf club to bottom out in the place that I want. And then when I combine that with the grip length that I have, this is allowing me to only let the toe side of the club interact with the turf. That is where we're going to get our predictability in regards to contact. Now, the last piece of this is what we do with our forearms right here. So this shot right here is not going to require a lot of forearm rotation, and it's not going to require a massive amount of hinge. So when you watch me set up right in here, I'm gonna be here, my stance is closed, so I'm not going to be rotating my forearms. My arms are staying with my chest, and so you can see this club is working more 
on a straight back to slightly outside position, which is going to allow me again to catch the golf ball first, interact with the toe side of the club, and ensure that I create good contact. So the neat thing about this as well, I'm gonna add one more piece to this, is the more outside I swing it, the easier it is to move my divot forward. The more inside I swing it, the easier it is for me to interact with the turf behind the golf ball. That is not gonna be a good thing, again, when we're on a tight lie and we're not trying to bounce this into the golf ball. So if we give this a go, I've got my grip length, I've closed my stance out minutely, I've pressured all of my weight here on my lead side, and I'm gonna feel with a couple of these practice swings here like I'm interacting with just the toe side of the turf and there's very little arm rotation and very little hinge. So I'd go in here, pressurize this. And so we can see that golf ball right there came out. Contact was awesome, had a little bit of spin on it and we we're able to get that closer to the flag. And again, contact is always going to be the thing that gives us the best chance to predict what the golf ball is going to do. Without contact, we have nothing. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, push that button down on the bottom. Subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel here. Don't forget as well, you can watch my you can watch my video series here on understanding setup. That's going to be in the, in the bio below. So, thank you again for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next time.